I'm Buddy Lindsay, welcome to Lindsay Acres Farm. And today we're gonna build a magnetic bandsaw instead of buying one. And we're gonna use our 3D printer to do it. So with that, let's get started. See how to do it. This is an older C style bandsaw that uh, doesn't, isn't made anymore. And I was able to get it really cheap. And the things I like about it is the cast iron table and the fact that it's an 18 inch bandsaw. Uh, those two things alone can be super expensive, but I got a really good deal on it a couple of years ago and I've been working on getting it back up and running. The last thing to do before uh, working on the tabletop here is to get a fence and I get a fence with it and I had to come up with something. So I decided to make one. So let's go over that here. First thing that I did is I 3D printed two key components here. Uh, the, I got this extrude aluminum from Powertech on Amazon, and I will leave links in the description to all the things that I purchased. I also purchased these magnetics, and these are, you can turn them on by just turning this dial here, pushing down and turning it, and that activates the magnet, so it pulls it down, just like some of the others. And you just do it the other way, and it releases. These both have 180 pounds of pull force uh, versus some of the others that are like 120, 100, 100 130 area. Uh, so this gives you a lot more locking mechanism. Uh, this is actually cut down from, I think, a three foot thing that I got. So you could actually match it from here to here. Uh, this is just some leftover and I think this will suit most of my needs. Uh, I can always modify and uh, uh, take this off and put it on some more. It's also secured to this 3D printed part and uh, is held on there. And so I can shake this thing. I can do all kinds of stuff and it's not gonna go anywhere. The other thing I can do is I can add uh, other stuff to the extrude aluminum uh, for more fencing or whatever. So let's go over some of the design process and actually assembling this thing because there's a couple things to take in mind. This doesn't happen just willy nilly and you have to go through an iterative de design process and let's do that. Uh, then we'll go over drilling the holes putting it all together, and then actually doing a demonstration of usage. And uh, I'm really proud of this thing, and I think it's gonna work out well. Okay, so for the first piece that I did is I just tried to get it to slide in here. Notice, like, it doesn't actually fit all that well. I finally got that, and then I worked on getting it to slide in there. Some of these didn't work well, some of them did, and then I expanded on into, you know, wrapping around and doing the full thing. Note this one has some issues. And I just kind of continued through here, doing different things until I got something that would slide on uh, like it needed to be. And there we go. See, that one fits on there. It slides, it slides down the thing and we're good to go. So now I know the measurements for that's good. But what I had to do is I had to measure every single spot. I had to measure all the inside areas with calipers and set those up on the 3D modeling software, my CAD software, FreeCAD. So once I got that done, I was, now, hey, now I have the slots, everything fits, it's time to do the next step. And that is the base because I have the magnet here. So I need to make sure the magnet fits in there. That went fairly easy. I just figured out some dimensions. One of the biggest problems is this curve. I didn't know what the size of that curve is. I'm like, man, how am I gonna figure that out? So I kind of just guessed and then I looked at it and I was like, realized, I don't really need that to be perfect. That's good enough. And that's kind of somewhat what the design steps are is what's good enough. So then I put that in my printing uh, uh, slicer and it kind of cut off a whole bunch of stuff and printed that for the next one. After that, I was like, okay, now I need to be able to mount this to the thing. And so that's where I did some measurements and oh, that one was off. And then so I did another one. Oh, that measurement's right. So now I could put screws through there and actually tighten it to the thing itself. And it basically it was just lots of measurements with calipers. And then finally we had uh, something that would actually work a little more. And I wanted to make sure in this one that if I had this in here, would it actually fit and slide on to the extrude aluminum. And yeah, it worked. So I didn't want to print the entire thing because that would just take a lot of, uh, uh, take a lot of filament and I didn't want to waste filament. So now at this point, we've gone through all this iteration process. We've done a ton of printing and now it's time to start. How are we going to mount the thing to the extrude aluminum itself? So it kind of comes up with like, how do you do it? So the first one I did is I printed up this one 
and I had the holes in there, which means I was going to have to drill a hole through uh, one of these raised pieces. So I started looking at it, and if you'll notice, that's super thin, and the hole that I needed for an M6 screw, which is what I was going to use at the time, was going to basically take out a lot of stuff, and I, I was just going to have a bad time. So that's why I only printed this one and kind of moved it on uh, to put on here so that I could actually take a look at it. What does this actually look like? How is this actually going to work? And uh, I realized this is not going to work. This is just, just not going to be set. One of the other things that I did is I set up where uh, the screw or the uh, nuts that we're going to have are actually going to be inset into the plastic so that it has a tight surface to tighten against. So then the final design I went with for this is I went through the big part of here uh, because it wasn't going to take out too much on be too thin. And then I could actually screw through the inner side here, which is a lot smaller. And so uh, once I did that, it actually fit a lot better. And then I can actually use this to be able to set up and do my marks for the center and center line punch this down down the side down through there so I can screw holes through so I can be able to screw this in. So the design process was very iterative and I went through all kinds of steps to be able to get to the final result which is this. Notice it's in here. It'll slide onto here just fine. And now we have a magnetic bandsaw fence uh, that actually works. And you turn that when we're on the uh, bandsaw and boom, it's going to be magnetically down. And then do that, turn it off, and you're good to go. Just the big thing is now this slides a lot. And so we need to add in the screws so that we can uh, screw in. Oh, see, uh, I tried to take it out, but I have those screws in. Uh, anyway, so we just got to finish it out by putting in the screw holes and then we can screw it all together and then we can put it on the bandsaw and test it out. For the sake of just something random, I'm doing an inch and a half in to this inside. Then I'm taking a punch and kind of centering it as best I can. I tried to get a different punch to self-center, but it didn't work out well. So I'm just going to have to do as best I can with the punch that I have. So the next thing is let's just assemble it. First, we'll put the uh, nuts in there on the inside. Boom. I think we have a magnetic bandsaw fence. So here we have it. We have our magnetic bandsaw fence. Note, you know, we can move it around and all that. We want to set it up here. We just turn these, maybe. Turn, turn that one there, and there we go. Now the whole bandsaw moves, this thing. I'm trying to move it and it's just not, it's not going. All right, let's try to do something practical with it. And let's try to cut something here.
So here we go, we got that piece cut off. Notice the fence did not move. This is mostly straight. If I ran this across the joiner a couple times, I'd get a very flat edge. So the next thing we could do is run it through this way and we could actually get a fairly good start on squaring this up pretty good and then finishing up with another tool. So I think with that, we have our magnetic bandsaw fence. Uh, this thing is pretty awesome. I mean, it is super secure, it is tight. These are stronger magnets than what you buy on some of the pre-made ones. It doesn't look the greatest. There are definitely a couple of improvements that can be made, but hey, you know, from getting this thing back and going and getting a, getting a bandsaw fence go up and going, I think this turned out really well. I think it's gonna serve me really well for years to come and I am super excited to use it. So with that, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.